Well, I used to hear this expression back a couple years ago, uh, central banks are losing control. And you would hear it from like alternative media like Bob Chapman or Max Kaiser or Alex Jones or whoever, right? Well, you know who's saying central banks are starting to lose control now? The major media. Major media. I got this off the major media um, news wires, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, basically, it has to do with the U.S. the 10-year Treasury note yields. Now, also, as the 10-year Treasuries, our yields are going up. That's killing the bond markets in the uh, emerging nations and also the uh, equities in emergency. All the emerging markets are getting clobbered and also due to a slowdown in China. Now, we do know that Chinese numbers are pretty much BS. Um, so, like when they're saying they got 7.5% growth, that's not true. If you look at what they're actually exporting and what people are importing from China, the numbers don't add up to the 7.5% growth. It's not tr correct. But the other side of this deal is um, they're not going to be able to raise interest rates and pay the interest on the debt. That's the thing. That's going to be the impossibility. So basically the central bankers are losing control. And um, actually, by in other words, it goes on to say that the Federal Reserve is by far the biggest player in the Treasury market. The concern is that when it makes the eventual decision to taper back the pace of bond purchases it makes under its open-ended quantitative easing program, markets could destabilize as a result. And that's exactly what's going on. As soon as they take their foot off the gas, markets crap out everywhere, if you want to just put it in the technical terms. But basically what they're worried about, the investors are worried about, is the the taper, taper, them tapering back. How is the Fed going to unwind its balance sheet? It's not. And you know, like I said, I went on yesterday pretty far along with uh, hemp, industrial hemp especially. That's one way to actually improve the lives of everybody in a real way without all those numbers mumbo jumbo garbage. You know, actually, because you got to have, you just can't say, you know, this is wrong, that's wrong. How do we fix it? Actually, in a real way, hemp can fix a lot of problems because a lot of problems actually are um, dealing with pollution. They're going to have that carbon cap and trade tax and all the carbon tax and all this type of stuff, cap and trade. Well, hemp is going to avoid all that because it's a plant. You're not going to have to worry about burning fossil fuels or whatever the hell they're called, or even if they are fossil fuels, maybe they're not fossil fuels, but fuels that pollute the air. So, I mean, that's just the major big boom to the economies everywhere. And if you look back, the population on the earth grew so much because of the Industrial Revolution, cheap energy. We're ignoring industrial hemp. And that's going to solve the pollution problem, too. Greenhouse effect, greenhouse gas effect that they claim. Well, if you're planting more stuff, you avoid the whole problem. But getting back to the whole thing here, it says, uh, sure enough, since they released the April... 2013 employment report on May 3rd, the bond market rally that began in mid-March reversed. And yields have shot up to the highest levels in over a year. They got up to, I think, 2.235%. Uh, so then it kind of settled down a little bit. So the sell-off in the U.S. Treasuries has big implications throughout the world. It affects all the markets. And the other thing that's going on is with Ch uh, Japan, Japan has embarked on this radical QE policy where they're going to try to like pump up the markets and stuff. But in a way, what they're supposed to do, though, is keep the yields, the interest rates, very low. They have to keep, they want to keep the interest rates so low that people take their money out of that area where, the, you know, bond market and put it into equities and things like that where they'll get some kind of return on the money. That's the whole intention. But the problem is it looks like when the U.S. Treasuries are going up in yield, it's causing everything to go up in yield. So it's kind of backfiring on Japan. This policy is backfiring on Japan. So basically this whole gist of this thing I was reading, it's actually from uh, major media. It's saying that the central banks look like they're losing control. Now, some argue that this might be the plan. <laughs> now, I, 
Now, me being more conspiratorial, I almost think that could be the plan because, uh, you know, I think they're, they, the whole end game is to have like a uh, catastrophic collapse of the system and replace it with something else. But, uh, you know, it turns out that, you know, that's, that probably is the whole deal in a nutshell, really, what's going to happen. They want to collapse everything all the way through. But it looks like, you know, maybe it's like uh, planned losing control. That's what I'm saying. But, you know, you know, it's a way of, uh, there's a method to the madness. It's like they say they're losing control because there's an end game going on. But it looks like the major media is actually point to the point to that central banks are losing control because interest rates are starting to spike up every time they let their foot off of uh, QE. And uh, the one thing to really watch is the U.S. Treasury markets, because if there's a sell-off in that, you know, it affects everything. It affects the whole world. And you know, that's been the whole theory behind going behind silver and gold, because what happens? You know, if the U.S. dollar loses its reserve, world reserve currency and the U.S. dollar gets greatly diminished, what's going to happen to the whole world? The whole world is going to be upset, basically. It's going to upset all the markets in the world. You know, I kind of disagree with that stuff that Peter Schiff says. You know, they don't need us. In a way, they do need us. <laughs> you know, the emerging markets do need us. And the United States actually is still a big industrial powerhouse, too. So if this is slow down in the United States... It affects commodities also. It's like, you know, it's not like we just produce nothing. It's not down to that type of thing. That's not true at all, even though China's moving up faster and faster. So, uh, but it looks like, you know, the major media is now recognizing that the central banks are losing control. And they even went on to say, which I think is, it's almost like uh, a planned losing of control. There's a method to the madness, and there's an end game involved. But um, what I expect at one point in time, I keep saying this, is that there's going to be a panic into the metals. A panic. And it's not going to be so much like the fundamentals say that the mining's they're running out of silver or gold in the mines or something like that. It's just that there's going to be so much money trying to jump into something that has that's not going to go to zero, which will be metals, never go to zero, uh, that... You know, there's just too much money out there. If you look at, you know, it'd be like trying to dump, dump uh, uh, a swimming pool into a thimble. You know, that's basically how much money is out there. If you take all the derivatives markets and quadrillions of money, there isn't that much money out there to go into gold and silver. That's why the price can really spike like crazy if there's, a, if there's a panic. And I assume there is a panic because central banks are losing control. Major media is admitting that. And, you know... Even the major media and everybody else, I think that's an alternative media, thinks there's a method to the madness behind them losing control of the system because they want to replace it with something else. But losing control means panic into the metals. Just hold on. It's going to play out.